Hello and welcome. It's 1130. It is the 19th day of April 2021. I'm your grumpy guide to all things gaming, the OG GM. Support me. Give us a subscribe. Help us hit 500 subs by August 4th. And we'll do something crazy. Hello and welcome to another exciting episode of this camera and me. And I'm going to address some of the YouTube comments I received over the weekend because some of them got pretty heated and some of them opened up a very interesting line of thought. Um, so last week I posted a thought experiment of what I thought 6th edition Dungeons and Dragons might be with the 50th anniversary coming up in 2024. And there's already some vague, faint rumors that they're playtesting something over there. They're writing something. At least they're thinking about it. Um, and I thought experimented that we were most likely going to see a 6th edition of some sort. And I listed the reasons why I thought we would see a 6th edition. But there's also a possibility that we'll see a big anniversary 5.1.5 rewrite counting in all the stuff that has changed since then, since fifth came out in 2014 because let's face it fifth edition from when it was printed till now has morphed tremendously beyond anything i could even expect and i'm very familiar with splat books having played pathfinder having played gerps having played 3.5 and second edition and remembering all the splat books from yuck sorry from second edition third edition fourth edition was actually not a lot of splat books. Pathfinder definitely has splat books. So considering how tentatively the first couple of years Wizards of the Coast Hasbro released product, but since then, I mean, God, that, can you even? I don't even know what to call it anymore. I mean, if somebody came up to me and said, "Hey, I want to play D and D," or "Can you teach me D and D?" I don't know how to answer that question anymore. A year ago, I would have had an answer, maybe. But, it's, I mean, just over this year alone, it's its completely changed. I don't really know what people expect from it anymore. If I was working at the shop and had to run a game, I'd be like, uh, uh, roll it. I don't know. I don't know anymore. I, I don't know anymore. Um, which is why I like the OSR so much. Um, so that, that received a long series of some very angry comments. And having survived the 4th edition wars and having said some very negative things about 5th edition myself and having the wherewithal to sometimes place myself in the mental mindset of the other individuals and go, okay, you know, this, I mean, on paper, this makes sense. I can see why they did it. Um, I want to address those issues because they're, th those are the issues that just keep adding to the toxicity. And if there's one thing I am totally against is the increasing levels of toxicity in our hobby. Um, I mean, yeah, they've always been there. There's always been my game versus your game, my table versus your table. But I mean, just, you know, since fifth edition, since Critical Role, that toxicity has increased. And over the past year, that toxicity has doubled because COVID, uh, you know, when you're trapped in your house for a year with nothing else to do, you lash out at anything just because it's something to do. Um, so, yeah. The, and the changes that happened to Fifth, especially over the past year, definitely spearheaded a lot of toxicity. So first and foremost, Fifth Edition did nothing wrong. It is a rule set. Fourth Edition is a rule set. Third Edition is a rule set. It's... Words and numbers on a piece of paper. The 5th edition rule book did not come into your house and kill your dog. There is no reason whatsoever to be angry at 5th edition the way it is written. It's perfectly fine. It's perfectly inoffensive. It's perfectly middle of the road. The system has good ideas. The system has bad ideas. It's a great starting point. It's not the best starting point. It is what it is and it always is what it will be. There is absolutely no reason whatsoever to be angry at 5th edition, the rules. Next step up, Wizards of the Coast and the choices they have made, especially over the past year. On paper, if I'm going to play Devil's Advocate, those choices make sense. 
And much like with 4th edition, and much like with the OGL, and much like with Pezo Pathfinder, Hasbro Wizards of the Coast has a long history of making choices that they think were the right choices. And maybe on paper, maybe when those choices left the, the station, they were actually good. They actually made sense. On paper, they made sense. The, the, little, the little choice train is leaving the Hasbro Wizards of the Coast station, and when it's leaving the station, that choice makes sense. By the time it reached us, the public, we're reading the choices, we're hearing the choices, we're responding to the choices, and we're like, that makes no fucking sense whatsoever to anyone. <laughs> well, okay, obviously it made sense to some people because 5th edition is still selling millions of dollars, but really, it doesn't make sense. Your choices do not make sense. I understand why you're saying, oh, we think D&D should be more inclusive, because yes, it should. It always has been, but there is definitely a belief system out there that it's not. And certain situations have perpetuated that belief system. That's not D&D's fault. That's each individual's fault. Wizards of the Coast, the idea train was, hey, let's address this. The idea train left the station, and between the time it left the station and the time it reached the general public, it went from, I think the game should be more inclusive, to... Whatever, you know, the censorship and the ism and the racism and the sexism and the orcs are evil and the dro or, you know, racial stereotype and blah, blah, blah. And Jessica Smith and uh, we have to write a whole book called Tasha's about how we're going to address inclusion and demi you know, demiology and lesbian and blah, 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 blah and, just, and you're just like. <sighs> so there's no reason to be mad at fifth edition, this system. Words on paper. Words on paper never hurt anybody. Unless, of course, you're like, you know, your death sentence or wanted posters. Actually, yeah, words on paper can hit people. Ignore that previous statement. How those words are interpreted is what angers people and gets the pitchforks and the torches out. The ideas, the original ideas, eh, on paper, they probably are good ideas. The way those ideas were implemented is what went wrong. So I'm not at, angry at Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition. I'm not even really angry at Wizards of the Coast. I'm angry at the way those choices have affected my hobby. I am angry at the way those choices have affected people. And I am angry at the way as the third wave hits of how that perception of whatever the post-critical role fifth edition now well, fourth edition but really fifth edition crap toxicity you versus me that table versus that table osr versus DD, &D, old people versus young people if you don't play D, &D this way you're doing it the wrong way the you have to let me have the ableism and the player advocacy and all that that continuing toxicity, that continuing misinterpretation, that continuing of taking something big and turning into something small and ugly, and this toxicity, this hate, this, this, this violence, this, this vile rubbish of just like turning something that is simple of roll a d20 and add numbers and pretend you're a guy fighting three other slime monsters into just into blowing it out of ridiculous proportions and forgetting that it's a game. That's what you should be angry about. Don't be angry at 5th edition or its art or the way it's written. I mean, who the fuck cares? If you don't like it, buy a different game. Obviously, there are enough people out there that do agree with what they did because it made millions of dollars during the pandemic. Well, most other companies went belly up. Hasbro was able to go here. <laughs> we made a profit, boys, thanks to these stupid cards and this stupid role-playing game. So obviously they're doing something right. They appeal to somebody. They have a target audience. I'm not the target audience, but they have a target audience. So don't be mad at D&D &D The Rules. Don't even really be mad at Wizards of the Coast because of the choices they made. The choices they made are stupid, but they're making them because they think they're the right choices. And because the Vox populace, their audience, is telling them, make this choice. Do this or else we will destroy you. 
And it is that toxicity that do this or else, or we will destroy you, that you should be angry at. And that is the thing you should be addressing with your energy. That is the thing we should be fighting to curtail, not all the other bullshit, the toxicity, the censorship, the prejudice, the reverse isms, the, the, all the things that are the, 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 the woke SJWs are doing to make it worse, to address this toxicity and this anger. So that's the first of the topics that I'm talking about, that the, 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 the anger towards fifth edition. I'm angry at the art. I'm angry at the way it's written. I'm angry at the way the rules change. I'm angry, 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 angry. Who the fuck cares about the art or the rules changes? They're words on paper. It doesn't matter. It's a game. You don't like it? Play a different game. Don't invest all that negative energy in the rules. Invest the negative energy into becoming positive energy to address change because the environment of the hobby right now is something to be angry about. Want to be angry about something? Don't be angry about the game. Don't be angry about the company that owns the game. They're, you know, just doing as best they can like anybody else against this whirlwind of nonsensical toxicity and isms and, you know, and ableism. Be angry at the way people have taken this and turned it into something ugly. That is the thing we should be addressing. Now pause. We've got a word from our sponsor. Hey kids, did you know I have a product up on DMs Guild and it's pretty much for free? That's right, go to DMs Guild and check out Brazen, Beastman of Billswater, the first of my four part fifth edition adventure series. Yes, I wrote a fifth edition adventure series, not because I'm a fan of fifth edition, but because it's the best way to get my name in the market and get people to see if they're actually interested in what I have to say as a game designer. And if they do, and I make enough copies of it available and people actually take the copies because they're free, then I'll know that there's an interest and then I'll do something else in non fifth edition. But this is just to test the water. So check it out, DMs Guild, Brazen Beastmen of Billswater. And now back to our regular scheduled program. Hey, thank you sponsor. And don't forget Primetime Sports Camp, our other sponsor, and Kutsi Cards, our newish third sponsor. That's right, support me. I need money and I will sell out. All right, let's address the other issue. And the other issue is of course, something I talked about in today's earlier post about the um, play test material, the constant stream of play test material and Tasha's and the constant reshaping of fifth edition into something no longer recognizable. And I have to say, I don't recognize 5th edition anymore because there's just been so much changes. I don't know if I could run it and do it justice. I don't know if I could even play it and feel like I fit in anymore because in order to catch up, I would have to invest so much time, so much energy, so much money, so much relearning that it's not worth it. So is 5th edition Dungeons & Dragons even still Dungeons & Dragons or has it just so morphed into something completely different from even what it was in 2014 that can we still call it 5th Dungeons & Dragons? I mean, Wizards of the Coast Hasbro owns the name. They could call anything they want Dungeons & Dragons. They could call this Dungeons & Dragons because they own the name. You could put that name on anything. Dungeons & Dragons, the breakfast cereal, merchandising, where the real money is. So yeah, they can call it Dungeons and Dragons. And if somebody says, I want to learn Dungeons and Dragons, you know, in 2014, you'd be like, okay, you want to learn fifth edition. Now I'm like, I don't know what that means. What does that mean to you? Because what you think Dungeons and Dragons is and what I think Dungeons and Dragons is and what that guy over there thinks Dungeons and Dragons is and what she thinks Dungeons and Dragons is are now completely different things. And what really upsets me is that you guys spent money on Tasha's book of bubbling excrement when you didn't have to. Because first off, everything in Tasha's before it was printed was made available for free on Earth Arcana. And sure, it probably got another round of editing and spell checking and maybe they tweaked it a little, but from what I've seen, most of the stuff that was on Earth Arcana that made it to Tasha's isn't that changed. So great, okay, so if Tasha's is the benchmark of, well, this is how we're going to write everything from now on. We're going to address all the issues and this is it. Bam. 
than anything after Tasha's that they print, like Ravenloft, like Candlekeep, and like all the shit that they're putting on Unearthed Arcana, makes Tasha's pointless, especially since that stuff on Unearthed Arcana is free. Like just now, they released a whole bunch of stuff changing Dragonborn and in making Kobolds a player character class and in changing stuff that they had just said were not going to change. This is it. This is Tasha's. This is where the buck starts and the buck ends. Everything after this now has to retroactively acknowledge Tasha and all the rule changes that we made in Tasha's. And that's why they put that stupid legacy sticker on all the old stuff because it's not Tasha's appropriate. But then they're changing it. And they're changing it so much that it's becoming unrecognizable. And it's unfair to people who actually bought Tasha's and had that thought that, okay, this is it. This is what changes the game and everything going forward is now going to be this. And they're going, <laughs> nope. We're changing what we just changed. So that makes Tasha's totally pointless. And we're going to keep morphing the game because we're doing what you think we want to do. And because there's a... There might be one more penny out there that we haven't melt. And it's such a change in the philosophy because when 2014, 2015, 2016, we saw maybe one, two things for 5th edition that were actually from Wizards of the Coast. They were very hesitant. They were very tentative. Their sales ideas made total sense. Rather than throwing everything that we can at the wall as quickly as we can, like Pezo's doing, with Starfinder and Pathfinder 2nd Edition, let's do something different. Let's just slowly release things. Let's test the waters. Let's see how this is going to work because we we don't have anything to lose. We've already got our billions of dollars. I mean, you know, if, so let's test it. Let's see if it works. And that was brilliant. That was part of the reason why I liked 5th when it first came out. It was refreshing. It was like a breath of fresh air, a splash of cold water. I didn't feel this compulsion to buy 27,000 other things when 5th edition came out because, well, most of the stuff I already had from older editions and they weren't throwing stuff in your face like Pazzo was at the exact same time. But over the past couple of years, especially Tasha's, that has completely changed. And now they're just like, bam, 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 bam. Let's just throw as much shit out there as we can and see what catches on. And then we're going to release a book where we collect all that shit and put it together and throw it out there again and make them rebuy everything they just bought. <clears throat> I guess that makes sense. I don't appreciate it. I, If I was a 5th edition fan, if I was somebody who was actively involved in the 5th edition community, which I'm not, and I have never really been. I mean, I ran it. I played it. You know, it was kind of like, eh, everything I need is in the player's handbook, right? I don't need it in any other books. I'm, I'm perfectly happy with this. But Tasha's came along and said, nope, screw that. I don't care if you're perfectly happy with the player's handbook. We just changed everything. And we're going to keep changing everything. At this point, to address the comment I just got, I don't recognize it. I can't, even if I wanted to, I can't invest energy. I don't know what to do now. If if somebody came up to me or, you know, in the local game store, that's Sess Games Anime here in Ventura, and said, run 5th edition for us, I would be like, I don't, I can't. I don't know how. I, I can't keep up with the changes. And if somebody comes to my table with something I'm not prepared to deal with, what do I do? Do I say... Do I play my previous, my gunfighter excuse? Well, fine, you can have that, but that means all my bad guys get it too. If you want a gun, sure, all my bad guys get guns. I suppose that's one way. The other way is to say, okay, yeah, you can have that, but you're like the only one. As far as you know, you are the only thing that does that. So, you know, it's in the player's handbook or it's 100% in the world. It's in, you know, anything else, if it's in the, in the original DM's guide, as treasure, it's 100% in the world. If it's in the original Monster Manual, it's 100% in the world. Anything else? Well, I mean, you know, I'm not... If you're going to really want to play that, fine. But I understand you're probably going to be the only one that is that or have that. So if that's something that appeals to you, great. But Or do I just say, no, I, I don't have that book. I don't really understand that book. I'm playing pre-Tasha's. You know, if, if that's not something you appreciate, you know... Maybe I can help you find a game that is, but I don't know. I honestly don't know anymore 
how to deal with 5th edition Dungeons and Dragons. I don't know how to deal with the mentality of most of the players anymore because it's just become so ridiculous. And I'm old and I'm tired and I have multiple mental health issues that I'm dealing with. I don't want to argue with somebody over for six hours over what rule is or is not appropriate or, you know, made to be feel like I can't even DM my own game because I'm stepping on their ableism. If you wonder why I've switched over to being a fan of the OSR, it's because I understand the OSR. It's simple. It's easy. And they're not constantly attacking me or making me feel like crap, like the way the fifth edition toxic fan base has become. And I don't even know if you can call fifth edition, fifth edition Dungeons and Dragons anymore. I am perfectly happy calling it the D20 Wizards of the Coast Hollywood Medieval Magic the Gathering fantasy game, because that's what it is. It is the D20 Wizards, Wizards of the Coast D20 fantasy game, but it's not d d Anyways, those are addressing some of the comments. I probably repeated myself several times. If you don't like me repeating myself, well, don't listen. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe. If you're going to unsubscribe, let me know why. Uh, hit that thumbs up button. Support me by checking out my product at DMs Guild. Uh, until next time, have a great day. Enjoy the lovely weather. Have a nice lunch and get off my lawn.